Dave Nassi at Epic Guitar Instruction. How you doing? We're going to learn a cool song right now. We're going to get into White Snake Still of the Night. And we're going to cover everything that we possibly can with the tune. Uh, this is a great song for all you John Sykes fans. That's all I got to say. There's a lot of great content within the video. So we're going to get to it as fast as we possibly can. Let's go ahead and start. So the beginning of the tune goes into an F-sharp power chord off of an open E string. Pretty famous right away. We have a basic power chord. We're going to do some pinch harmonics that are going to go from the fifth string on the ninth fret to the seventh fret. You can slide into it if you want from the sixth string if you want. Ultimately accenting this. But Later on down the line, we're going to have to get a good pinch on this low string here, too, on the second fret, just to get that going. I will say this for you uh, people out there that are like, yeah, pinch harmonics. I get it. It's all good. The thing about it is, is you want to make sure that you don't tweak the string until you hit the pinch, because if I pull it away from my pick, it's going to be harder for me to articulate. I think that's kind of the most common thing that happens in the beginning. Um, when you give it vibrato, it actually gives it the extra overtones that you're hearing. And I'm hitting it like this, but when I go, that's when it kind of takes on a life of its own. So you want a vibrato after you hit the pinch. I'll just say that. Okay, so it's going to do that for a minute, and then we're going to kick into a really cool riff that goes just like this, but I'm going to explain it slow before I play it fast. We're going to lead in with some chromaticism off of an open A, and we're going to go just like so. The riff actually starts here on the second fret, third string. I'm gonna strike this one time. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna hit the fourth fret. I do skip over that D string. I'm gonna go open, and then I go fret. So with the chromatic run ahead of it, play that a little cleaner. Then we have the rest of our riff. What happened there was this. Two, three, two, open, two, open, open. A lot of opens going on here. So we have this slowly leading us in. Riff starts. One more time, I'll play that slow for you. Riff starts. I have a rhythm that I'm going to build into the octave. Much like a tune we know. It's not that song though, but you know what you use. It's a teaser. Nah, that's not it though. So we have E chord. Look at that. Power chord. That's one that's got huevos. This one is all punch. You're barring all the way to the fifth string. You have the third finger on the fourth fret, and you have your pinky over here. Uh, in context, everybody, let's not overthink it. Start the riff. When you get into it the second time, you're going to go open, and you're going to go right from three to two. And those are the subtle differences between the two. So that's the riff in context is this, leading us in, riff starts, so I'll play it one more time slow and try to watch that ringing overtone in the beginning. So we have So, the next part. You can kind of execute that a couple of different ways. You're going between an E power chord. I'm going to pivot off the low string. I'm manning on an up strum. Kind of tricky, I will say, to decipher between da 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 slide, right? What if you just tuned in and I was like, it went like this. 
it wouldn't really work. Not so much, right? No, I get it. But you know, you get the idea when we phonetically sound it out with the power chord. I've seen that though, I gotta say. I've seen people post videos like that and the riff goes like this and they kind of phonetically sound it out. I think that's pretty awesome. I'm a fan. So uh, we're gonna go into an A chord and we have a little bit of play to keep a rhythm beat. So we have... That's an A chord, two open single A's and then a fretted G note to an open low. Key. When I hit that open E, I go right back to A. Now this is going to be a hammer on pull off where I strike my index finger. I'm going to go up to five and I'm going to go to an open string. into some cool riffage. So I think that's all good. We're gonna have a neat section that comes up that goes. So that's some cool classic blues stuff. Uh, D chord, slide to my third finger from seven to nine. A little bit too distorted for that overtone, but that's what you would essentially kind of be mimicking. Pivoting off that A string. That's going to come up again if you go to Now we can do another accent in there where we can address the G triad just for a second. Because the bass does it essentially. Just to mention it, because there's some different, you know, kind of jamming elements to the, that part specifically. Right there. And we go into the cool, you know, David Coverdale vocal section. So the violin part and the sweet alternate picking lick coming out of it, that's basically what we're going to be thinking about. And then we have one chordal section to cover and we're all good. Um, let's take a look at what this melody does with the violin. So this is going to be seven on the fifth string, four on the fourth string, five and back again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Now go to the third fret. come in, but these notes will stay the same. Really palm muted. Want to take your time with it. So watch my right hand here as I rest against the guitar just for fun. I'm going to think. Nice tight motion. Try to keep that beat in your head. It's really integral to the part. Now it's up and up. between that part it gets kind of busy there is that the transition from five is going to happen before you go to three when i'm out here i got to stretch the pinky to get the third string seventh fret let me play it really slow fourth Playing the whole 
whole thing slow and really clear. <laughs> section it's pretty cool it's a good picking exercise really if you wanted to go through it just to kind of you know get get all that together um, the next part that's going to happen is e to d now notice i'm getting super lazy on you i'm using my pinky but you go Now you're gonna go. That's gonna be 12, 11, and 10. Then we're gonna go 11, 9, and 10. And then we're gonna bar there. So that's gonna be. That's going to lead us into this really cool picked lick that's going to take place. Now, um, I'm going to give you just the easiest way to break this up so you get a, a, a nice understanding of this. As we get into this alternate picked run at the end, which is a really cool lick to learn, I got to say there's going to be some help that'll that'll give you some guidance along the way. There's uh, a link that you see in the description box. If you click on that link, you're going to get a great ebook and video that's not available on YouTube. It'll cover all these scales and things that you're going to hear me yammering about but it's free and it's helpful. You can kind of look at them side by side as we go through it. Um, terminology with scales can be distracting. This is really well thought out and laid out for you. It's free and it's easy. So all you gotta do is just click on that sucker. Um, when we go through this now, I'm gonna break it down like this. Everything we're gonna do, we're gonna pick it twice. Okay, we're gonna break that down to get the understanding of it. There's so much variation within this, we're gonna get you in the wheelhouse. That's what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm gonna start off with this shape here that goes 8, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 11, 12. We're gonna use 10, 12, 13, and we're gonna shift after that. But if you go, it's not a bad run. It's very John Sykes esque. The Les Paul man standing up, Marshall can't get any better. So the next run that we're gonna do is this bad boy. We're gonna go to this scale shape. This is 12, 13, and 15. This is 12, 14, and 15. We're gonna go up from there to 13, 15, and 17, and 14, 15, and 17. In a ebook format, this is the Lydian scale shape going into the Mixolydian scale shape. And at the top, I'm using a little bit of your Aeolian shape, but these are all the same notes, everybody. That's what we just wanna make sure. Terminology of scales is only to say that we're just keep playing the same thing over and over again. Uh, so if I break this down. Got a big old bend on 17 that I can resolve to, and then I'm gonna take it up to the 20 deuce. But if I break this pattern up, There's variations, right? So let's try this. If that's not enough for you in the picking department, we can do this pattern. That's a little more true to the song, I should say. I'll play that better. And then you're gonna roll through this one. This is 15, 17, and 19. So for you pickers out there, these patterns will be familiar. So I'm going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and following that scale. I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna go through it. 
that's the, what he plays on the record. I turned my volume down as I did that, but we still had enough. We still had enough tone. It was like, shh, wait for it. Uh, so as we go through that, we got a big old bend. And then we're gonna go up to the twenty-second fret. Now bends on the twenty-second, like back in the day, uh, dating myself, Circus Magazine, cool, sweet rock mags. You'd see these dudes doing these bends, and you're like, why is that first finger all the way over here? It's because you can mute. And you can get crazy on the 22nd fret, and you could do the pose. Like if I had my foot on a monitor and I had cool hair, you get a lot of torque in that. So slowly, kind of slow. you can get all nuts with it. So I would say a couple of cleaner versions, you know, just to make sure I'm not too, too fast for everybody. You can double them. We can implement the pattern. We can carry that up a little further. We got options. That's the biggest thing. So uh, that's the coolest part of that jam in my opinion. It will really help me along with that sweet little riff in the beginning. Uh, What's wrong with John Sykes? It's a Les Paul and a Marshall. It's really, really important for anybody. Thank you so much. I think that was a really good time. We covered White Steak still of the night. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. Click the like button. All the hits and more. We will uh, take your suggestions. We will honor them. I promise. Give us some of them. We love it. Thank you so much.